We're going to start this tutorial with a small cheat engine table here. We just have our uh, our entity pointer 50F4F4, which is pointing to our object address in this location. And we have a health pointer here using the same pointer with the offset F8. And we want to make a fly hack, invisibility hack, and a no clip hack that all work online. So to do this, uh, we need to think about how the game logic works. So uh, let's specifically just think about fly hack first. Um, so let's say that every tick of that the game runs, it uh, it's calculating uh, whatever buttons you're pressing for your movement. It's applying different sorts of uh, velocity modifiers to it and especially gravity that we're going to be looking at where it's going to act on your Z coordinate based on however the game logic determines your speed. And we're going to try to disable that so that when we move in a vertical direction, the game doesn't uh, apply any gravity to it. So the I you can do this pretty easily in a couple different ways, but I thought it was interesting that uh, Assault Cube has two different things it can do. When you press E, you go in, into this edit mode, um, and then you can fly around however you want. And also, when you go into spectate mode, uh, that only works online, you can also fly the camera around as a spectator. So what I'm thinking is, there's this like move player function that moves, that applies these modifiers to your position, and maybe it checks like a boolean, like B spectate or uh, B edit mode, and and we could find those and maybe knock those instructions or modify them so that we can fly around in the game. So that's what we're going to be looking for. So the first thing we want to do is find our uh, our Z coordinate so we can do find out what axis what access is it. So first thing we're going to do uh, we're going to do our first scan here and we're going to set it to float right and we're going to do a value between and this is just going to be I'm going to show you how to filter your scans. Uh, to be a lot faster. So first, we know that our Z coordinate is write is a writable data variable, right? It's not an executable code. We also know it's probably in the player class. So we only want to scan for this player class. So let's grab this address. That's the beginning of our object. And let's say, uh, who knows? Let's paste it into a calculator and say that uh, if we add 2,000 bytes to it, that that's like the largest size range where our Z coordinate is going to be um, and we'll do a scan and you know I doubt the game's going to have us at a Z value of less than negative 20 and not greater than 50 so if we do a first scan I don't know what's going on with that let me try this again sorry new scan float blah 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 value between and 50 and there we go. So we got 2,000 results. Normally, if you do this, you get like 50 million results if you don't use these proper filters. And I'm going to show you one other thing. If we go to Edit and Settings and then go to our, our hotkeys, there's a couple of good hotkeys that you want to use to make uh, your cheating faster. Um, the first one is Increased Value. I like to use Shift plus uh, Numpad plus Sign. Decreased Value is Shift plus the Minus Sign. Changed value is uh, shift plus the delete key on the numpad, which is also the uh, the period or the dot. And unchanged value, which is uh, shift insert or shift uh, also zero on the numpad. So that's going to make it so we don't have to alt tab out of the game and we can scan much faster. So we're up here on this ledge. Let's, uh, let's jump down, right? And then we're going to do shift and the minus sign, and that's going to search for decreased value. We'll go to the top of here, do shift plus, and that's going to do increased value. And so we've already got it down to nine results uh, pretty quickly, so that's good. Um, so one of these has our Z coordinate. We see these two, 12.5 and 8, that are very close in memory. Um, now let's, let's change these to, let's say, I don't know, 15. Our character doesn't move. Let's move this one to a 10, and our guy does move. Um, and so these are both Z coordinates, but this one, the 8, is the location of your player's body, and the 12.5 is the location of your head or your eyes, and that's where the camera position is. So if we do find out what access is, we know that the offset is C, right? So let's, uh, let's grab this pointer. Let's copy this uh, pointer, add address manually, pointer, paste it in, and we know the offset is C. 
And so this is our Z coordinate uh, for our head. We can delete these. Let's make sure we also change this to float. All right, so we want to find out what writes to this Z coordinate. We're going to define out what writes to this address pointed to by this pointer, and we get all these instructions. And these happen quite uh, frequently, so that's probably happening like every tick of the game. So let's click Show Disassembler on this first one, and then right-click that address and do Select Current Function. And that's going to bring us to the top of that function. So here's the address of the function, 5ADA0, relative offset from the from the module. And so this is uh, pretty confusing stuff here. So why don't we get a top-down uh, view of this in Ida Pro? We're going to let this parse the binary. And if you look down here, you can see the progress of it. I'll say it's all finished in just a second. So the add that relative offset was 5ADA0. Um, if we do if you do control G, you're gonna get the address of that. And so let's copy that. Let's go over here to our, our subroutine window. Do control F and then paste that in. And we're gonna get the correct subroutine. So let's open that. And you can see it in this uh, flowchart view, right? And let's get a better view by clicking F5, and that's gonna decompile it if you have the uh, full version of Ida. And let's just assume right off the bat that this is our move player function, so let's call it move player. And let's look at the arguments here. So the first argument, A1, is passed into EAX, uh, and then you have these two other ints, I'm not sure what those are. But let's just scroll down and see what we see. There's a lot of local uh, variables in this because this is this is a pretty big function here, right? It's pretty big. It's basically if you look at this, it's all float instructions. Uh, so you know there's a lot going on with uh, either your coordinates or uh, your even your angles too. So another thing we want to do is you can see these are all decimal addresses. Uh, if you click Edit uh, Plugins. And then find hex rays here, decompiler, click options, and then this default radix here, put 16. So that's going to set it in base 16 for hexadecimal. All right, Momda just showed me that trick, so the, shout out to him. Uh, so now we have everything in hex. So we are talking about, you know, in this function, we want to find like a comparison where it's checking uh, a Boolean that maybe spectate or maybe like an entity type or an entity mode that's going to check uh, if you're in edit mode or something like that. So right off the bat, I see he I do see an if statement here with comparison where they're taking a V3 plus offset 338 and they're comparing it against the number five. So. I'm curious right away, is uh, is V3 uh, the player object, the entity object? So where does V3 get its value? V3 gets its value from A1. So A1 is uh, what's passed into EAX. So that's like the first argument. So let's see if that's correct. So let's go here, right click this, and do toggle breakpoint. And that's the top of the function, so EAX hasn't been modified yet. And e EAX is this F47, but our uh, address here is this 023. So if we click, if we do F9 and run through this function, uh, we don't see that 23 FA. Oh, no, actually, there it is. So this is correct. There are other entities in the object that are being modified by this function, and we see that it definitely is the correct uh, function, and EAX is uh, the entity object. So we can toggle this breakpoint, turn it off, hit F9 again to run the game. And so let's look up here, and let's just change A1. We're going to click the uh, N on your keyboard, and you can rename the variable. We're going to call it Ent. And basically what we want to do is we want to rename some things in here so this will start to make a little more sense. So ent gets assigned to v3, so we'll just call this ent2. It's basically just a copy of it. And if you if you scroll throughout it, ent2 shows up everywhere. So the whole purpose of this function is to act on EAX. 
Anyways, let's scroll back up. First thing I see is these two offsets, 82, 83, and then 338. And specifically, this uh, if statement is what is what I'm interested in. So uh, it's actually some interesting syntax because it's checking this or this, but there's this comma in here. And so what that means is when this if statement runs, the first thing it does is it sets v116 to equal 1. And then if this or this, uh, then it's going to set v116 to 0. So I'm, I'm already thinking that this is a bool because um, it has a 0 or a 1, and it's defaulting to 1. Uh, so let's click this, and just let's just call it bool1, and we can track it later in the disassembly here. And well, what's v5? Uh, v5 uh, gets its value from uh, entity plus offset 83. Uh, so let's find out what is that. Uh, so we're going to open reclass, and we're going to attach it to AC client. All right, and we want to grab this pointer, right, right there. So it's going to point to our entity object, and click on this address. We're going to paste it in, but we're going to surround it by these brackets, and that's going to dereference it. That's what's really nice about reclass.net has a whole bunch of additional features. Um, so now we're at the right address. Let's right click and add uh, 2000 bytes so we can get a full look at the, the entity here. And this, so we're looking at offset 82 and 83. So let's scroll down here. Uh, we see 80 and 84. So we need to separate this out. So we're gonna do uh, hex eight. This is also gonna be hex eight. And now we get access to 82. And we are going to change that to a byte. It could be an integer, but uh, I've already kind of looked at this. It's definitely a byte. Uh, so we're going to do int 8 to represent a byte. And we're going to do the same thing for 83. So these are both 0. Uh, we can like jump around, and they don't change. Um, they're still zero. So what happens when we modify them? Let's change zero uh, to one. And we die. That again. Yeah, we die. So I'm not sure what that is. What if we put a two in there? Uh, we turn invisible, but we can still move around. All right, what if we change it to three? All right, it does the same thing. And so what if we change it to four? Oh, four we can no clip. So two and three we get invisible, and four uh, we get no clip. So this is actually, if you want to do no clip in multiplayer, all you have to do is set that uh, set that offset to be four. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Let's set it back to zero. Uh, offset 83. So int eight. Uh, offset 82. Let's look at that. So we're not sure what this is, but let's just re rename it. Let's call this uh, no clip four, and we'll just add in a comment right here. Uh, you can right click, add a comment, uh, set to four for no clip, and then v five is eighty three. So let's see what eighty three. Offset 83, let's set it to 1. Our gun disappears. We can still shoot. Um, we're invisible currently on our screen, so I'm not sure what that does. Let's set that to 2 as well. Same thing. All right, nothing special when we do three either. So let's set that back to zero. So what's interesting is these both basically do the same thing um, if they if they are any number besides zero. So think about a bool, right? If it's non-zero, it's true. If it's zero, it's false. Uh, let's go back to Ida. So this is not no clip, right? Uh, but it you can be invisible. So we'll rename it to be invisible. We're not actually sure what they do, but that's just to give us an idea of what's going on. So the next line here is uh, no clip equals equals four, and that's 
is set to v118. So if no clip is is four, then v118 is true. So this is another bool, right? Uh, not sure. No clip equals four. We kind of already figured out that four is uh is is the value that we want if we want to enable no clip. Uh, and let's call. Let's actually rename this to no clip v no clip. All right, and then the next line, if invisible or this is not five, then set bool one to, to false. And so let's look at offset 338. All right, there's offset 338. Let's uh, make it also a byte in eight. And uh, we're not sure what this is yet. So it's already asked, it's, we already know that five means something. So let's just set it to five. Back to the game. Now we can fly around. Okay, so five is probably the spectator uh, entity mode or entity type, whatever you want to call it. So let's just call us ent type spectator. All right, what if we set it to like one? Nothing really happens. Two, again, nothing. So three. Nothing. So I'm going to say that five is the only real value we want. Let's set it back to zero and reopen this. So we know uh, we get if we set this offset to four, we get no clip. If we set this offset uh, to anything but zero, I believe our player turns invisible. We're not really sure what that means yet. And and if this, we'll add a comment to this. And a five equals spectator, right? And just to confirm this, we can uh, go to salt key. No, we can't do that unless we're on the server. Okay. So if invisible uh, or or not a spectator, then bool one equals zero. So zero would be false. So let's um, let's say this is like B spectate or edit mode, right? So this is a boolean. When it's one, you're spectating or editing. When it's zero, you're not. And then we have this line here, no clip. Uh, no clip is four and B, B spec edit. If either of those are true, then set V6 to true. So this is gonna be bool uh, spectate three. And then that also gets put into V115. So we're also going to do Vool effect 4. And then let's just scroll down. We want to see where any of these bools are used in any sort of if statement, right? We scroll down. We see if invisible equals 3. Uh, let's just confirm that. That's uh, 0x83. If we set that to 3, we're invisible. We can't move though. I can't jump. I can't fly. I can't do anything. Let's set that back to zero. Seems like three is the only important uh, number there. So let's see what else we can find. Uh, we see this if statement where they're accessing offset C, which we remember is our Z coordinate, right? If the Z coordinate is greater than or equal to D word 5054C, so let's take a look at that. 505F4C, it's a double. You can see it, casting it to a double here, right? And it's just this big stupid number, um, which I have no idea what it means. Constant, though, it doesn't change. And so I'm not sure what that is. Um, doesn't really concern us at this time. Let's keep scrolling. We see we do see an if statement here. Uh, if uh, offset 69 is true or bool spectate is true, then v11 is equals six. So we see here um, they're checking v8 too. So where does v8 get get its number from? Eh, it just looks like a float. Like uh, I see three floats here, so I'm thinking 
they're assigning uh, either angles or velocity or coordinates to a vector, right? With th with x, y, z. Uh, so let's keep going here. D11. Not sure what it does. It gets assigned different constant values, and it it gets a calculation here, and it gets assigned to v12. And then v12, you'll see they do some more ifs and calculations. And then in this statement here, you see they're they're accessing uh, 10, 14, and 18 in hex. And so again, that is definitely another vec3, right? They're four bytes apart. They're all floats, and they're all in a row here. And so let's look at those in reclass. Uh, scroll up to offset 0x10. Let's right click that, change type. Let's change it to a vec3. All right, and then let's go into the game and let's move around. Okay, and you see the values are changing when we move. We stay still, it turns to zero. Whenever you see that, that's your velocity. You jump, only the z velocity changes, right? So that's the velocity that your player is moving at. That's what they're going to apply to your current that to your next game position. You know, like on the next tick. So x, y, z of your of your velocity get uh, get modified, right, by this. But then here you only get x and y, but not z. And I'm not exactly sure, but we see that 0x18, that's your z, right? And v12 gets multiplied by that and gets assigned into v13. So I'm going to say v11, some sort of uh, velocity modifier. So let's right click that, rename, uh, velocity mod. And we know v13 is the same thing, but it's a velocity modifier for the z. And v12 is also a calculated from the velocity, right? So more calculations. We don't need to know exactly how they work unless you want to make some crazy hack. So as you're scrolling through here we're kind of giving we're kind of getting an idea of what's going on in this function and we don't need to reverse the whole thing we know that we have basically three variables that uh, that we can make these hacks with right we can if we change this to four we get no clip if we change this to like any number besides zero it turns our guy invisible and uh and this zero three three eight offset is our spectator All right, so let's change some things in here so that we can keep track of it all. That's velocity. This is uh, offset 8a. Uh, so we got a bug here. So remember, these were 0x82 and 83, and now they've changed to 8a, 8b, uh, because we modified something above it. You always want to reverse top down. Let's change, reset all these by setting them to hex 32. And let's uh, go back to. We have 80, set that to a byte, set that to a byte, and now we have wanted. So int 8, int 8, 8. It's actually just x. It's not important to us right now. And so this is going to be no clip 4. It's going to be invisible. And then 0x338, like the entity type. Or spectator again that got messed up too so let's reset them hex 32 and that was offset 0x338 right here set that to a byte 8 and let's uh, what we're calling it uh, spectate and 5 to spectate so we know what's going on here we know what we need to modify Set this to 5 for spectator. We can fly around. Go up here again. No clip. Set this to 4. We can no clip around. But if you see here, we can't shoot people, okay? You can shoot the gun. Nothing happens. So that's not good. That's not a great no clip pack because we can't shoot. Uh, and then the invisible. We set that to 1. We turn invisible. Okay. So we, 
We know this works on the client. Let's see if it works on the server. So what we need to do is go to this folder. You can run this uh, server wizard and it'll create this batch file for you. And then you just run that. Open the server. And we are gonna connect to it. Go to multiplayer, go to LAN server. That's my server right there. Apparently I didn't put my password in. Top secret password. And so I really, I want to test out the invisible thing because that sounded pretty freaking cool. So we need to also open another assault cube guy. So we're going to run two clients and connect them both to the server. So that we can see each other. Uh, guy down here. Multiplayer, join a LAN server. Both these guys down on the ground so we can see each other. And now there is some very light uh, anti-cheat built into Assault Cube. Uh, you can view a little of it in the GitHub uh, in the GitHub source code for Assault Cube. But some, some of it's hidden away. They didn't include all the code on the GitHub. Uh, so the server that you're getting in this uh, folder is not the same one that you get uh, when you compile GitHub. There are some things that are still hidden from us. So we're going to keep this up because if anything, any sort of cheats are detected, uh, like you're moving really far more than normal character would, it's going to show up in there. I think it's going to say like fast move or big move. So let's uh, go back to reclass here. Set no clip to four. And you can fly around in no clip. And see, we did get kick. Drake is colliding with the map. Anti cheat kicks me. All right. So that's not going to work. At least not the way we had it. Uh, join a LAN server, password, and then invisible, just set it to one. Oh, that's weird. Okay, if we set it to one, nothing happens. Uh, two, nothing happens. Three, nothing happens. Four, nothing happens. Five, nothing happens. Okay, so we can't go. I mean, our character on our screen uh, does here for a second uh, on our screen, but not on the other characters. So that's not going to work. What if we set no clip to one? If you see in the bottom screen, my guy goes invisible. Uh, right? But then we respawn. We respawn up here. So, yeah, we have an invisibility hack, but the guy moved. Uh, so we can't fly around on the map being invisible. All right, so the question is, how can we compare, how can we combine these hacks so that we bypass the anti-cheat uh, detection, which is basically just, uh, it detects the distance between last tick and current tick, and if it's too far, it knows you're, like, speed hacking or whatever. Uh, so uh, it's basically just trial and error. You saw in a lot of this, I'm just kind of guessing and doing trial and error. That's all reverse engineering really is sometimes. And so I know if I set, this is what I figured out. If you set spectate to five, so you can fly around. And then you go up to offset 82. And if you set this to 11, if you set it to four, you can no clip. If you set it to one, you become invisible, but then, but then you respawn. But if for some reason, when you set it to 11, you become invisible, uh, and but you don't respawn. So now I can fly around the map, and if you look at the server, I'm not getting detected, and so I can fly around invisible all day, and they're not going to detect me. Now you can't shoot anyone. So you could basically like combine this with an aimbot, right? Fly around, 
and when you're ready to shoot just just turn off uh turn off this so you can shoot and then turn it right back on pretty easy to automate so i thought this was wicked cool uh because it works online all right so let's code this up uh, in c++ uh as i showed you before you need to have done this tutorial uh once you do it you're going to have uh, a source code right here and so we're going to use this as a base basically we don't need uh half of this stuff so we are going to get rid of it um i want to mention one thing real quick uh i see people on the forum after they do this tutorial they're making hacks and basically their hacks look like this uh with a bunch of these fine dma addy calls and you only need to use this once to get the address of uh the object and then to offset into that all you need to do is add the offset so rather than doing this for every uh offset you just need to call it once uh to get like the dynamic base address right and then you would just do like uh let's say that this got the uh, the object address right then your next thing you would do is just u in pointer ammo equals uh equals object address you know plus zero x f8 or whatever it is you only needed to call this once per object and then after that you just offset into it uh so that's that so let's get rid of this and we're going to set up some hack vars here nothing too special uh bool b hack equals false uh i'm gonna type i'm gonna code all this and then i'll explain it um byte spectate on equals five byte spectate off equals zero byte visible on equals 11 Byte invisible off equals zero. Win pointer underscore t and address equals zero. Win pointer underscore t spectate address equals zero. Win pointer underscore t invisible address equals zero. Wow, right, good, great typing as usual. Uh, we're gonna do a while loop, while one. And uh, we're going to do this if get a sync key state bk insert. Going to end it with one. Uh, b hack equals opposite of b hack. Read process memory. H process. Byte pointer. Dynamic pointer base address. I'm gonna put that into n address, size of n address, and null pointer. Typing on point as always. All right, spectate address equals n address plus 0x338. Visible address equals n address plus 0x82. And then if b hack, write process memory, h process, byte pointer, spectate address address of spectate on size of pointer oh the spectate address on and we're going to do else and basically we're going to copy and paste this three times then we're going to change the vars right so we're going to write to the spectate address then we're going to want to write to the uh invisible address and invisible on And same thing down here. 
except it's going to be invisible off. Spectate off. And I think that's it, right? Yeah, that's it. So, uh, just go over this real quick. Uh, we're going to get the process ID. We're going to get the module base address. Uh, we're going to open a process and store the handle to the process there with uh, read, write, execute, all those good things. Uh, we're going to calculate from the module base address plus the relative address. Going to get the pointer that points to the entity. Uh, we're going to get rid of this too. And we've got a bool to set our hack on and off. Uh, we have bytes representing the different hacks. And we're going to do a while loop. And then we're going to do get async key state, which means get asynchronous key state. And VK insert is going to be the insert button on our keyboard. If you right click it, go to definition, you can see all the key code defines there. You can also just Google uh, like MSDN virtual keys and you'll get a full list of all those. Why are we ending it with one? If you go to MSDN and read the documentation, basically the highest bit, I believe, on uh, in the result of this is going to, if you test it against one, it's going to mean that um, the key hasn't, the key press hasn't been changed since the last time uh, the function was called. So basically, this while loop, there's no sleep in it. You know, it's going to get executed, you know, hundreds or thousands of times per second. And if the first time you press it, this is going to execute. But while it's looping, it's going. By the time your finger lifts up from the key, it's going to have done this, you know, a hundred times. And so it's going to test: Did uh, was it was it already pressed down before? If so, don't continue uh, the if statement. Uh, so we're going to set b hack equals the opposite. So if it's true, it's going to be set to the false. If it's false, it's going to be set to true. We are going to read from the pointer and then store the address of the object into an address. And then, like I said, we're not going to use find DMA Addy because it's only one offset and there's there's no, there's no offsets. It's only one level pointer. There's no offsets. So you don't need find DMA Addy. And then we're just going to offset into it to get the addresses, right? And then if the hack is if the hack is enabled, we are going to write the on uh, bytes. And then if it's toggled off, it's going to disable it. Pretty simple, right? Now let's load up a salt cube and let's test it out. All right, now we're good. All right, so now I'll press insert. We can fly around, invisible, turn it off, and then land. All right, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, like the video, guidedhacking.com slash donate if you'd like to donate. And please do the tutorials, do the guides. Everything is there for you. All you need to do is do them. And I promise you'll be successful at game hacking. All right, dudes, peace.